So a client recently contacted me and they urgently needed help with their book sales. They just weren't getting any sales, like none, zero. So I asked them to send me a link to their book and as soon as I saw it, it was super clear that their cover urgently needed changing. This client was publishing a unicorn coloring book and here's the thing, they actually got all the elements right, they just didn't design it in an effective way. They got the unicorn on the cover as well as a rainbow, a cloudy background and some colorful text, but it wasn't executed correctly. I knew I could do a much better job to help them increase their click-through rate, so I asked them if I could make a new one for them and they agreed so it was time to open up photoshop and get to work now since this is a coloring book the trim size is eight and a half by 11 inches so this is a document that i created in photoshop now the main part of the cover is the unicorn, which is why it's super important to pick the best one. The client sent me some of their coloring pages, so I just flicked through the PDF and tried to find the best one. Now I'm looking for a unicorn that takes up some space, but also has some movement in the illustration. I found the one I like most and copy and pasted it into Photoshop. Now there was a bunch of background elements that were connecting to the main unicorn illustration, so I had to get rid of them. I used the pen tool in Photoshop to go around the unicorn and carefully selected the edges of the illustration. Once I selected everything, I just deleted the background and passed Wow, we got our main unicorn illustration. Now the illustration is looking a little empty, so let's give it some color. After searching online for a unicorn color palette, I found one with colors I think work well with this cover. I placed the color palette in Photoshop and used the eyedropper tool to extract each color. The unicorn hair in the original cover was multicolored, so I wanted to stick to that. I started coloring in the unicorn hair in different shades of pink and blue and used the same combination for the tail. Now, the color palette also had some yellow, so I added that to the horn and the hooves. Now I didn't really know that they were called hooves, so I just called them feet in the Photoshop layer. It wasn't until afterwards when I Googled what unicorn feet are called is when I discovered that they were actually called hooves. I guess you learn something new every day. But anyway, let's move on to the I went online and tried to find the background. I wanted something simple with clouds, but I couldn't quite find exactly what I was looking for. So I just picked a random colorful background with clouds for now. I knew it wasn't going to be the final background, but it was good enough to help me figure out the text font before finding a better one. And with that being said, I tried to find a font that would work well with this cover on my computer, but quickly realized that I didn't have anything good. So I went online, did some searching, and found a font called Fantasia. Now this sounded like such a cool name for a font, but I accidentally searched for Fantasia on Google and found out that Fantasia is actually an indoor water park, arcade, and bowling theme park. The place looked amazing. But anyway, I was getting off track. We've got a cover to finish. The font looked good, but it didn't look unicorny enough, if that's even a real word. So I added a simple stroke to make it stand out, and then added a cool colorful gradient to make it fit with the unicorn colors. The stroke wasn't enough, so I added a second stroke under the first one, and the title was starting to look good. There wasn't enough room to write the words coloring book under the title, so the only place I could place it was under the unicorn. I experimented with an illustrated ribbon to make it stand out more, but quickly deleted it, because it didn't quite fit how I wanted it to. The background was still bothering me, so I searched online for a different background, and found a nice simple blue cloudy background and use that one instead. Blue wasn't really the girliest color so I added a hue and a saturation layer and turned it purple. Now, the background was looking a little dull so I added some sun ray effects to draw the eye to the unicorn and added some subtle stars as well that gave it almost like a glittery feeling. Now, the cover was slowly starting to take shape but the word coloring book still needed to be added. I used the same font and the same stroke effect for consistency and placed it under the unicorn. I went on Amazon to look at what the competitor covers looked like and noticed every single one of them had a rainbow. So I added one too. I wanted to make it seem like a rainbow was shooting out of the cloud. So I went online and found an illustration of a cloud to place behind the title. I then found an image with rainbow colors and placed it behind the cloud. It didn't quite look like it was shooting out of the clouds. So I added a perspective shift to the rainbow colors. And now it looked like the rainbow was actually shooting out of the cloud. Now the colors were a little too intense. So I decreased the opacity of the rainbow and played around with the cloud on the bottom a bit. To make the words coloring books stand out a little more. Now, as a little cherry on top, I found some really simple star illustrations that I added next to the title just for extra effect. The old cover had a sticker which showed the customer that the book was for ages 3 and over. So I created a pink circle, placed it behind the unicorn, and added the text for ages 3 plus in a thin but friendly font inside that circle. Now the cover looked complete, but something was still bothering me. Something was missing. Something just wasn't quite right. So I played around with the gradients a bit, but I still felt like something was missing. And I think I know what. The unicorn illustration looked a little dull and flat. I think it needed some shading. But here's the thing. I don't know how to shade illustrations. Luckily though, I have a friend who does. So I called them up and asked them if they could help me. I need you to shade a little bit if you can. Ah, uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Now after hearing the great news, I sent the Photoshop file to the mystery friend and got started on the back cover. 
I went online, searched for the KDP cover calculator, filled in the correct information and downloaded the template. I dragged the template into Photoshop and decreased the opacity to 50%. This way I can see the layers underneath while also making sure everything is aligned with the template. I dragged the cover we just made onto the right side of the template and positioned it correctly making sure all the text was within the borders. I then took the background we used for the cover and placed it on the left side of the template, which is where the back cover is going to go. I then scrolled through the PDF interior that the client sent me and selected four different coloring pages to show up and placed them neatly on the back cover. Now the space on top of the illustrations was looking a little empty, so I needed to fill it up with a headlight. I went onto the client's book listing and copied their description headlight. I pasted that headlight on top of the coloring pages using the same font and style that we used for the book cover. Finally, I added a thin pink rectangle for the book spine just for some added color. And pow! The cover is finally complete. Well, not quite. We still needed to see if our mystery friend finished shading in the illustration. So I checked my emails, opened up the Photoshop file, and there it was, the final book cover. The shading made it look 10 times better than before. It was finally a book cover that I was happy with. So I replaced the front cover in the template, and there it was, the final book cover. Now, which book cover do you prefer? The old one or the new one? Let me know in the comments down below.